Hey guys! So last year I made this Pottery Barn inspired um, succulent wall art and these are all fake. They're plastic. I got them on Amazon um, and it's held up awesome. So that video link will be in the description below. But today I'm going to show you how to make a live succulent wall planter. Um, it's going to be in a vintage crate. It's going to be a little bit smaller. Um, but it's gonna be awesome. So hit the like button and subscribe and let's get to it. So the first step you're gonna wanna do is cover any wood with polyurethane. This will make sure your wood doesn't rot and uh, get weathered over time. And then you want to add your hanging hardware. You definitely don't want to add hanging hardware when all the dirt and all your plants are already in. So figure out how you want to hang it, where you're going to hang it, and um, just install that hardware for that application. black plastic garbage bag to line my wood. Um, this isn't necessary if you've polyurethaned it inside and there's no cracks or gaps, but my vintage crate has two large gaps in the back and some on the side, so I just thought it would be better to just line it and make sure we're not losing soil or water during the process. Um, I'm using a staple gun and I'm not doing a perfect job, but I also don't want black plastic hanging outside of the crate. I think that will look um, a little bit crazy. So I'm tucking in corners and um, stapling as I go. staples in my staple gun um, and it is plugged in it's not battery operated so you will have to do this where you have access to an outlet but um, the the main key with using a staple gun is to really make sure there's enough pressure you can see I use my second hand to press it in otherwise the staple um, pops out a bit and that can snag and catch and it just doesn't quite work out um, for, for some applications, like for instance, when we attach the chicken wire, you're gonna want all those staples nicely flushed, um, flush with the crate. So uh, this is the last step. Um, you saw that I trimmed off the excess and now I am folding it just so, so that I have an opening near the handle, which will allow me a place for my watering system to um, be exposed. Now, uh, full disclosure, I learned a lot from making this wall planter and I would change the way I do the soaker hose uh, water application system. Um, I would probably do the opposite. As you can see, I have the end of the hose and then I cut off um, at the length that I wanted. And now I'm just drilling holes so that I can attach the receiving end at the top of my crate. Well. I basically learned you probably want to do the exact opposite. You're going to want to leave the receiving end of the soaker hose. The receiving end is the end that attaches to your garden hose. And the reason I would keep that end instead is because that will allow you to have water pressure and the watering system will happen much faster and easier. So I also wouldn't put the receiving end at the top. I would probably have it hanging out of the bottom handle of my crate um, so that I could just pull the gardening hose up to the bottom, screw it on, turn it on for a couple seconds, uh, let the soaker hose fill with water, and that's it. So um, I, I bought like a, a 10 foot soaker hose. And so what I would do is I would leave the receiving end, like I mentioned before, and then after I wind it around the crate, to you know, fully cover the soaking area. Then you're just gonna wanna clip it with a little excess and the soaker hose is pretty flexible. So you could tie it off, you could clamp it, um, possibly glue it, 
you just don't want to leave it open because then water will gush um, through your whole wall planter and that's not going to be good for succulents because they're in the cactus family and they actually do like things more dry and the the soil you're going to use is cactus soil because it drains really well so that is my my learning tip for this and um, I, I just figured out I really would have benefited more with water pressure. So you can do it this way, especially if you have little kids who like the slow, tedious process of using a watering can to water your plants. But um, for us, that's not exactly the case. It would have been easier just to attach a hose, um, shoot some water in there, turn it off and let the soaker hose, you know, slowly saturate the soil and then once a week continue to do that same thing. So I still think the soaker hose is a great idea. Um, I just would have basically reversed what I did. Dirt outside, you can do it in your kitchen if you want, but um, I'm wearing gloves because I also don't want my fingers stained with dirt and I'm using the, the cactus potting soil mix from miracle Grow, um, which I have noticed some uh, faster growth with my succulents, so that's super cool. Um, I, I am pressing down the soil though because um, succulents like a tight fitting environment. They like to be squished and um, have things really tight. So I'm just kind of evenly spreading my cactus soil sure that it's as flat as can be and I'm leaving just a little bit of room to add my sheet moss and the sheet moss is what's going to ultimately keep the soil in and the succulents so this sheet moss is pretty awesome it's like I said it's in nice sheets um, which just makes it covering this area way more easy um, because the thickness is pretty um, consistent and it's a, a gorgeous shade of green and it comes apart really easily so that you can kind of shape it and fit it into any space you want. Um, all my links are down in the description um, and so you can use exactly what I got. Um, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more DIY and decorating videos. I'd appreciate that and I hope you stay tuned. I also have a blog, 804sycamore.com and just in case you like learning things in a different way. Um, so anyways, after you get your, your sheet moss all situated in place, you pat it down, make sure it's pretty even, then we are on to the next part, which kind of scared me at first, but you guys, it's so easy. So this chicken wire, all, it's, it's kind of tight, tightly wound, um, but it is really forgiving. And all I'm doing is I'm going to attach it on two sides. Um, I'm not attaching the wire at the top and bottom um, ends, mainly because I have this, you can see this metal um, corner right there, but also because it's not necessary. The sheet moss totally keeps everything in. And so the chicken wire really is just extra insurance. Um, so when I have the one side on, then I'm able to trim it at the exact length I need. Um, and then I can attach the other side. So these are just jewelry um, metal cutters. Um, I used to make jewelry and I had these around. They're just, they're small, they get in those tight spots and they're strong enough and they just do a great job. So um, I am just trimming up, I'm trimming off the excess chicken wire and you can see um, it, the metal kind of curves in nicely and so but if it doesn't you'll want to take the time and kind of curve that metal in so that it doesn't hurt anybody it doesn't snag a sweater or skin or anything horrible like that so um, after I kind of lay the chicken wire flat I'm gonna go ahead and attach the bottom end and I don't know if you can see but some of these staples are not in good enough. So I went ahead and had to remove the loose ones and reattach. These really need to be flush. Um, they really need to be perfect and you want a secure fit. And then I go ahead and just trim off the excess 
and you're good to go. Our wall planter, this is seriously the most fun part and you can see I'm using my gloves again. I just, I just don't want the dirt stains, but they're not necessary at all. Um, I'm kind of placing it about where I want so that I can decide which wire to cut. And I found it was easiest to make two cuts. And I don't know if you can see it very well, but it leaves me a Y shape of wire. And then I take a serrated steak knife, cut through the sheet moss, and just shove in the succulent. And I go ahead and take a little extra moss um, just to tuck it in there. It really helps keep it snug, secure, keeps any loose dirt. And it also helps keep the water in um, so that they can really soak it up. So I get my succulents. They're two inch by two inch pots. I get them from Amazon. Um, I always have got bulk succulents from Amazon and I've had um, nothing but a good experience. But make sure you read those reviews. Um, in fact, this succulent that I'm working on right now, two of them did not make it. Um, I'm not sure why. Sometimes it just happens. Um, but they shipped perfectly. They arrived perfectly. So maybe it was user error. I don't know. But um, you just really, after you, after you clip the chicken wire and you cut that, that single hole, um, you just use your fingers to pull it back. And as you can see, I'm carefully wrapping the wire back in and that's going to help secure it. What it also does is when my two succulents died, I was very easily able to pull back the wire, pull out the succulent, and then replant something else. So that is one of the advantages to not just trimming away the chicken wire. You can go ahead and remove and replace very easily without losing that structure and strength of the wire. If you just cut it away, um, it, you may have some um, issues going on. So I would just say, think about your pattern ahead of time, the way you want to plant your succulents and just go for it. If you don't like something, you can easily change it, like I said. So have fun with it. And I would love to see your creations. Um, you can tag me on Instagram, 804 Sycamore, or on Facebook, 804 Sycamore. So thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and have fun making your own real life succulent wall planter.